Castle Crashers is a 2D side scrolling hack and slash developed by the Behemoth in 2008. Castle Crashers has built a large and loyal community that is still active today. In today's video, I will be explaining the story of Castle Crashers. All is calm and when in the kingdom until one day the barbarians attack. Caught off guard, the knights of the kingdom try their best to fend off the enemy invasion, but they are outnumbered and unprepared. Down in the barracks, more of these knights are relaxing until one of the grey knights gets knocked down the stairs. This immediately causes panic in the barracks as everyone rushes out to see what is happening. Just then, an evil wizard arrives at the castle and confronts the king. Using his magic, the wizard steals the king's crystal and flies away. The king then commands his four most loyal and best knights. This being the green knight with his toxic fumes, the red knight and the power of lightning, the blue knight and the power to freeze, and the orange knight with the power of fire. Immediately the knights get to work with clearing out the barbarians from the castle. They soon find out that it was not only the king's crystal that was stolen, but the four princesses of the kingdom too. After saving the few soldiers and civilians they could, they visit the blacksmith, a former knight of the king, now retired to provide weapons for the knights of the kingdom. They soon enter no man's land, caught between the chaos of the castle knights and the barbarian soldiers, they fight their way through the land, defeating one of the barbarian war vehicles. The knights eventually reach the barbarian base and encounter the barbarian boss, the one leading the attack. Here they also find the four princesses tied up. They try their best to defeat the barbarian boss and save the princesses in time, but it was too late, as during the fight, three out of the four princesses were taken. But not all was lost, as after defeating the barbarian boss, they managed to save the first princess. After saving the first princess, the knights visit the dock. The sailors there tell the knights that they are missing three important artifacts before they can sail. The sailors ask the knights to retrieve the artifacts so the boat can be used across the ocean. Following the trail of the princesses, they see a guy and his soldiers take one. So the knights follow the princesses and end up in a forest. Whilst fighting their way through the forest, the knights come across these weird creatures that live deep in the trees. These are called trolls. And whilst going through the forest, the knights cannot help but notice a large thud nearby, causing the local wildlife to be terrified. Up ahead, it becomes apparent where these trolls are coming from as the knights face the troll mother. After defeating the troll mother and her children, the knights find out what was causing the thudding from earlier. A ginormous troll erupts and angrily chases the four knights as they use deers to get away. The knights eventually fall off the old mill, landing in the river below. The princesses are then seen in the background, being taken further away. The knights use the river to quickly catch up with the princesses and are soon joined by the knight and his soldiers on their warship. However, a bear riding a cat fish surfaces and attempts to defeat the knights and the king, but by using the king's warship, the catfish is defeated. Eventually the knights reach dry land and progress onwards, leaving the king and his soldiers to prepare catapults for later use. Here the knights come across a clan of bears, although the bears don't seem to be part of the evil wizard's army. They are still hostile however, so the knights have no choice but to defeat them and their leader. Up ahead, the knights see two of the princesses being taken away by two mysterious figures. The knights are forced through a cave in order to reach the other side. In this cave, they encounter a giant bat, but it is quickly defeated. On the other side of the cave, the knights find the industrial castle and one of the princesses. The industrial prince then reveals himself as the person earlier, taking the princess. A giant sheet of metal is blocking the entrance to the castle, so for now, the knights cannot gain access. Looking for options, the knights notice a commotion at a nearby chapel. Upon further investigation, the knights find one of the princesses, being forced into a marriage by an unknown groom. The knights defeat the groom, only to find out that the Cyclops was using the toilet and was the figure seen earlier taking one of the princesses. Out of anger and sadness for defeating the Cyclops' friend, the Cyclops grabs the princess and escapes down an elevator. Using the groom's cannon, the knights launch themselves onto the groom's carriage, meant to celebrate the wedding. However, all of the commotion had attracted the giant troll from earlier as it begins to chase down the carriage. The four knights are able to defend themselves and defeat the giant troll for good as they get knocked off the carriage and forced yet through another cave. In the cave, the knights come across the wrecked carriage, being looted by thieves. They also find soldiers of the groom too. After fighting off both the enemy factions, the knights leave the cave and travel through an area with lava spurting from the floor. This leads them into a fortress. Whilst fighting through the area, the knights notice pictures on the wall, pictures of the groom and the cyclops. They were obviously close friends. It begins to make sense why the cyclops acted the way he did. Up ahead, they see the cyclops on his chair, sobbing at his recently lost friend. The cyclops notices the 
Knights and overcome by rage goes to attack. During the battle, the Cyclops gets infuriated that he cannot defeat the Knights and rages even more. This causes his attacks to become faster, more aggressive but more clumsy. Until in the heat of the battle, the Cyclops loses his footing, falling into a lava pit, experiencing a painful, fiery death. In the midst of all the chaos, the four Knights decide to go check on the local town of Lava World. But upon arrival, things seem strange, there are no villagers. Upon further inspection, the Knights find that the area has been overran by fire demons and rivers of lava. The Knights are immediately attacked by these fire demons, so with no choice, they fight their way through. Up ahead, the Knights are blocked by a large metal gate, similar to the one seen at Industrial Castle. However, the fire demon in charge of protecting this gate drops an unusual sandwich. Upon eating this sandwich, the Knights feel strange, but stronger. It turns out that these sandwiches cause the Knights to double in size, muscles bulging from their armour. With this new strength, the Knights are able to throw the metal gate out of their way, but the effects from the sandwiches only seem to last about 10 seconds, so soon the Knights return to their normal size. After fighting off waves of fire demons, the Knights come across the sign for Lava World, but once entering, they notice that there are yet no villagers. That is until they make a gruesome discovery. The people of the village are encased in hardened lava and frozen in time. With no time to react, the four knights cross paths with the evil wizard carrying the crystal, but an unusual looking knight is with him too. This knight, dubbed the Necromancer, then resurrects the dead villagers as skeletons to fight the knights before flying away. Upon defeating the resurrected villagers, the knights find what may have caused all of this destruction, a living volcano sitting over the town. The knights eat another sandwich, and once again, they double in size. With the strength of the sandwich, the knights are able to rip the volcano apart. Up ahead, the knights spot one of the artifacts needed for the boat. However, this artifact is guarded by a large dragon with a sock puppet. The dragon can breathe fire and throw boulders, but despite that, the knights prevail and retrieve the artifact. Back at the Cyclops' fortress, the evil wizard and necromancer stop. They notice the Cyclops dead in lava and decide to resurrect him. With the power of the sandwiches, the knights return to the industrial castle, but this time are able to rip the metal sheet straight from the wall. And upon entering the industrial castle, the knights are immediately attacked by the prince's soldiers. After defeating the first defence, the knights come across traps that are in their way. Using careful timing, the knights make their way through the traps and up a long elevator. This leads them straight to the industrial prince and his war machine. The prince uses his machine to try and defeat the knights, but it is no use. The knights are just too strong. Upon defeating the machine, the prince tries to escape with the princess as the evil wizard arrives. But the evil wizard betrays the prince, taking the princess and leaving him for dead. The knights then decide if they should spare or kill the industrial prince, ultimately deciding on killing him. The knights then retrieve the second artifact needed for the boat, but they actually spot one of the princesses trapped in the Frost King's castle. They now know that they need to cross the ocean to get to her. They return to the blacksmith to grab the last artifact needed for the boat and gear up for their journey ahead. Once ready, the knights return to the dock and using the artifacts, travel across the ocean. After fighting off pirate ninjas on their way, the knights land in the desert. They travel through the desert until they begin to notice that something doesn't feel right. UFOs arrive and begin to attack the knights. But after defeating the UFOs, a larger UFO comes and abducts them. Now in prison, the knights notice a control pad and destroy it, breaking them free from their cell. They explore the UFO and eventually find the ship's control room alongside the pilots. The knights upon defeating the pilots are ambushed by all of the aliens on the ship. It turns out that these aliens are no match for the knights and are quickly defeated. But during the fight, one of the alien prisoners is set free, a much larger buff alien. He runs to the ship's control pad and smashes it, causing the ship to enter self-destruct mode. In a panic, the knights quickly rush through the ship to make it to the escape pods and luckily make it in time. Landing back in the desert, the knights leave the escape pod and once again begin their journey through the desert. They eventually find themselves in a large sandcastle and fighting their way through, end up in a volleyball game. Deciding to join in, the knights play volleyball with the enemy and after using some dirty tactics, manage to beat the enemies with 10 points. The enemies then reward the knights with a map that would lead them through the desert. The knights arrive at an old temple blocked by a stone gate. Upon further inspection, the knights notice that the gate has a horn with corn on it. Using this, the knights decide to check out the cornfield nearby. On the way, the knights come across the necromancer once again. The necromancer then resurrects the dead to fight the four knights before flying away. After defeating the necromancer's minions, the knights make it to the cornfield. 
they encounter a giant corn that seems to have come alive. The corn surprisingly puts up a good fight against the knights as it takes them a while to defeat, but upon defeating it, the local villagers reward the knights with a horn. The knights then travel back to the stone gate and blow into the horn. This opens the gate and lets the knights through. The knights find themselves in a ruined temple, guided by unusual fish people. After fighting their way through the temple, they come across Medusa, a snake woman hybrid that seems to live in the temple. Angered by the knight's presence, Medusa attacks. The knights fight back and defeat Medusa, turning her into stone. Passing through the temple, the knights eventually make their way onto a mountain. Making their way up this mountain, they fight off waves of heavily armoured soldiers. They eventually climb so high that the area becomes snowy as they fight the local Eskimos. After breaching the Eskimos' defences, they make their way into the Frost King's castle. Here they encounter the Frost King himself as well as the third princess. The Frost King is able to teleport and summon ice, making it an extremely difficult fight for the knights. On top of that, the terrain is icy, making it hard for the knights to get a footing. But after a difficult and lengthy battle, the knights are able to defeat the Frost King and save the third princess. The knights make their way through a destroyed rotten land left behind by the evil wizard. They encounter the wizard along with a painter, the resurrected Cyclops and the Necromancer. The wizard's temple then begins to flow, so the knights pursue. Upon landing on this floating temple, the knights enter. They are greeted with the evil wizard's cult minions, beings that have devoted themselves to the wizard and his plans. After defeating the cult minions, the knights are greeted with four portals. They enter the first and are greeted by the painter, an unusual being that is able to control the paintings that it makes. The knights eventually destroy all of the paintings and defeat the painter. And in a room nearby, the knights destroy a crystal that was being protected. This unlocks the second portal. Upon entering this portal, the knights face off with the Cyclops once again, now carrying the coffin of his dead friend. And during the fight, the groom's corpse actually attacks, presumably brought to life by the necromancer. The knights realise, however, that the Cyclops and Groom are not fighting on their own terms, potentially being controlled by the Necromancer. So after putting them both out of their misery, the Cyclops and Groom's soul can finally rest. Once again, the knights destroy a crystal and move on to the third portal. Behind this portal lies the toughest enemy the knights have ever faced, the Necromancer himself. The room is filled with corpses of all the creatures the knights have faced on their journey, and even worse, the Necromancer resurrects these corpses to fight. After defeating the undead army, the Necromancer himself drops down to fight. This is by far the most difficult fight the knights have ever faced. It's an even fight, both the Necromancer and knights throwing blows and blocking attacks. After a lengthy and difficult battle, the knights succeed and defeat the Necromancer. And for one last time, the knights destroy a crystal and move on to the final portal. This portal leads to the evil wizard himself. Sat on his throne with the princess nearby, the wizard summons four crystals. These crystals slam into the knights, but the knights are able to dodge and destroy them. The wizard descends from his throne and goes to fight the knights himself. He is equipped with two shields, one that is immune to magic and one that is immune to physical attacks. The knights figure this out and are able to destroy the shield. The wizard then inflates, floating in the sky as a ball. This seems to be some sort of healing for the wizard. The knights jump up and wail on the wizard. This causes the wizard to fall down as he is crushed by a chest. It seems to be over, the knights had won. But when opening the chest, the evil wizard erupts as a giant spider-like creature, potentially the wizard's true form. The wizard also summons cult minions to help fight. Caught off guard, the knights once again continue fighting. After taking enough hits, the wizard once again goes into his floating ball form, potentially to try and heal one last time. The knights catch this however and once again wail on him. After taking enough hits, the wizard in a final desperate attempt summons his sword. It can summon meteors from the sky and is as hot as lava. The wizard attacks the knights one last time but his efforts are useless as the knights for the final time defeat him. The floating temple then begins to crumble. The knights are able to land on the king's crystal, catch the princess and ride it all the way back to the king's castle. The evil wizard is defeated, the princesses are saved and the crystal is retrieved. As a token of his gratitude, the king allows one of the knights to marry his daughter the orange princess. But as the knight goes in to kiss her, it is revealed that she was a clown the whole time. The game fades to black as the end appears on the screen. So that is the Castle Crashers story explained. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.